I bought some used Minn Kota talons and I'm going to mount them on my jack plate. Now I'm going to use the Minn Kota jack plate mount for the talons and they are really unique because you can mount them to the side of a jack plate. Now if you don't have a jack plate you would have to get the bracket where you take the outboard off which is a little harder to do. You can also mount it on your transom. However, I really don't have access to my transom right here. And I have a lot of stuff in the way. Now it did come with instructions, which I'm probably not going to use. Actually, I might need torque specifications out of this thing. This has quite a few different jack plates in it. However, it does not have the Pro Hijacker jack plate in here. So I have to wing this a little bit and use a six-year-old YouTube video to make sure I'm doing this right. Now talking about that YouTube video, I'm going to do some things that he corrected as he was going. The first thing he did, he ended up taking like all of his bolts out. And when you do that, this gets out of alignment. So how am I going to do it? One bolt at a time. I'm going to mount the bottom one and then do the top one. Behind these two bolts, there is a bar. And if I take these two bolts out, that bar will fall out. At least I think it will fall out. This actually has pins right here. So maybe it won't. I don't know. I do have the outboard on this tire holding it up a little bit. I think the rubber would work better on this skeg than using the wooden board. And the way I have it down on it, it should hold everything in place. Knock on wood, which... I have no wood around me to knock on. This should be pretty easy, so let's see what happens. Okay, these two bolts here are three quarter inch. Righty tidy, lefty loosey. So I don't think it's binding up. That's good. Doesn't look like it's moved. And here is the package with two bolts that I'm going to put in it. I have a lock washer on this one. And they don't provide lock washers. They do provide some anti seize which will keep the stainless from welding together. It's like the same thread. Just going to test it. Yep. Alright. I'm going to use their lock washer, or what came with the boat, and then one of these big washers that was provided. A little bit of anti-seize. I think you're supposed to put this all over everything. Get this part of the bracket here. Tighten it up. I'm going to check the back. It's poked out a little bit, but there's nothing back here. That's going to cause a problem. Now to undo the other one. You can take it out by hand. That is a good sign. Same thing. Old lock washer. New thick washer. And boy, oh boy, are these things thick. Look at the difference there. Now I can't see. This one's being a little bit more tough to get in, but I think I got it started. Yeah. There we go. It is even to the bottom, and I actually had to use a screw hole here. You see that on camera, that's actually a screw hole instead of this slot. 
It must be the way this Pro Hijacker is made. The bottom one is in the slot. And you know what? I forgot to put the anti-seize on. All right, I got anti-seize on it. I'm gonna tighten it down. This would be a lot easier with power tools. However, in the instructions, which yes, I did read them, it says not to use power tools because they could make these parts seize up. Okay, I'm getting these hand tight first. Now in the book, it says, 50 foot-pounds minimum. So I got my trusty torque wrench. I will set it to 50 pounds. There we go. 50 foot-pounds on the bottom, 50 foot-pounds on the top. Now I'm going to do all of this on the other side. Alright, as I was working the other side, I found a sticker that says these bolts must be torqued to 80 foot-pounds. So I went back and retorqued these to 80 foot-pounds on both sides. So keep that in mind. Look up what type of jack plate you have and see what their specifications are. Now the next part of this is the easy part. The assembly of the bracket itself. You want it going up like that and there's grooves in here so you can put it in and just leave it in place. So I'm going to have to figure out what is the best position for this. Maybe it's not the easiest part, I don't know. I'm going to have to mock this up and uh, look at it. So every boat is going to be different with this. And here's the power pull bracket itself. I'm hoping it's this easy. Now at this point, I'm going to need help. And it is late at night right now, so I'm going to wait till tomorrow to finish this up and finish this video. Let's see who I can hoodwink into helping me with this. All right, I hoodwinked my buddy Alan to help me with this project. So what we're going to do, we're just going to focus on this and get it done. Then I'll explain it to you guys what we did. There's quite a bit we got to figure out here because it's got to be adjusted just right. So stay tuned and uh, see what we figure out. It's like, okay, how, how does it go down? Hmm? Oh, does it come straight out of the bottom? Yeah, straight out of the bottom. Okay. So we might be able to just use it the way we got it. No, that thing needs to run around there square with the boat. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because it does go straight down. Yep. All right, we actually had to do some changes here because I realized that the bottom of the bracket would be in the water. It was almost equal to the transducer, which means it would have splashed water up, kind of like what the transducer does right now. So we moved it up a bolt on the jack plate. And then we just put this all back together. All the large bolts are torqued down 50 foot pounds. And like I said earlier, the ones on the jack plate are 80 pounds. And it says not to over tighten the ones on the actual talon brackets. Now that is pretty much it for the talon install. All that's really needed is maybe these need to be loosened, all four of these bolts, and have it either go up or down. Probably down a little bit. I will have to get it on the water to see where it needs to go. Because these talons are 10 foot talons, it really doesn't matter. 
outside of the fact I might need to lower them to get the boat out of the garage. I think it will clear. I guess I will find out in a few days when I need to get the boat out to do a guided trip. I'm definitely not going to call a client and say, hey, I can't get my boat out of the garage because of my Talon install. There is one more thing that needs to be done. It's routing the wires and hooking them up to the battery, which is just your basic positive and negative. I probably don't even need this extra wire they gave me on this install. This will be different on every boat, and I'm going to do it later. There is one more thing I need to do. They actually shorted me a remote. And when we were testing these to make sure they actually worked, which they do work, this remote only works for this one. I can put this in a pairing mode that I don't know how to do right now and have it do both of the talons. And it has a little sticky on the back so I can stick it on my console. Like I said, that's stuff I will do later. However, the main part is done. And boy oh boy, this is solid as a rock. Now it's my understanding this jack plate is rated for a 175 horsepower motor. So right now I have a 140 horsepower motor and two brackets that weigh 20 pounds each and then the talons themselves, which I don't know what they weigh, but I think they weigh 20 to 30 pounds each. I will have to look up what the heaviest 175 horsepower is. However, I'm sure that all of this is less than that outboard. If you think I've got too much on this transom and jack plate, just let me know in the comments below. I've seen other people do the same setup with a Excel Bay Pro 203. So I should be fine or it will all fall in the water. Anyway, I want to thank you for taking your time out of your day to watch this video. I really, really appreciate it. I definitely can't wait until flathead season where I can really get to use these in my shallow water flathead area. The maximum flooded depth is about 8 feet and these are 10 foot talons. So it should be perfect for that crazy creek. No more worry about current going upstream and then downstream and then upstream and then downstream. I just got to make sure the line doesn't get wrapped up in all of this. Thanks again for watching. I hope to see you next time.